Okay, thanks. So the recording started. Welcome everybody to OLS 7. It's our first call of OLS 7. I'm so excited that we start this seventh cohort of OLS. Thanks everybody for joining uh, as participants, as mentors, as facilitators, as any world that you are participating in OLS. It's really, really exciting to, to have all you there. So my name is Berenice Batu. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders and co-director of uh, OLS. Um, we have two other co-directors there uh, in the call, uh, Amy and Malvika. And we are really, really excited to, to have there, you there. Um, so during this call, we will um, we will go a bit to say hello, introduce ourselves on the, on, about um, what we are doing here, what is OLS, a few few things that we want to cover today. Uh, we you will start talking to each other also and see the spirit of OLS, which is a lot about uh, community, about interaction with with uh, with each other and everything. Um, the first things I want to really mention also is uh, we have a code of conduct and participation guideline that you can find the link to in the line uh, 96 in the etherpads. Uh, so if you experience or witness unacceptable behavior or you have any concern, please report them directly to, you can report them to the organizer. So uh, Amy, Malvika, you, uh, Paz or me, you can, uh, 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 send an email to team at openlifescience.org. And if you want to report or, uh, an issue involving one of us, one of the organizers, please email one of the member individually so you can join us directly by email. The emails, uh, you can find them on the etherpads. You can also join us, uh, write to us directly on Slack. But please take the time to look at the kind of conduct. We really want, want you to be to be aware of this kind of conduct. And we will mention that every time, every for every call, but this is the first call and I really want to, to unfire that, that again. So please take a bit of time uh, after this call or during at the beginning of this call now that I'm talking, 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 uh, to, to have a look to this code of conduct. It's really important for us. Um, another thing I want to mention, so during the call, we will have breakout rooms, so where we you will be in small groups and you will be able to interact with each other. Um, and we try to have two types of, of, of breakout rooms. One we, the one we mentioned about speaking and some writing. So the idea is in the speaking rooms, you will talk to each other uh, by speaking. And in the writing rooms, you will use the chat to interact with each other. Um, so it would be awesome if you could uh, please indicate your preferences so you could edit the names on, on Zoom and add a W if you will prefer to be part of a, a written reflection based uh, um, breakout rooms or a S if you prefer speak, uh, spoken breakout rooms. It will help us to uh, divide you in the breakout room. So please, if you can take one minute now to edit your names. Um, so to do that, you, you can click on your video and you can click uh, right click on the video and click on rename and change your name and add a S or a W in the front in the beginning of your of your name. So like Amy put a W, I put a S. So if all of you could do that, that would be really, really great. Um, and if you are okay with both, please choose one of, of, of the options. Just it's it's important for us to really split the people within the correct breakout rooms. So I see on still some people that didn't. Could you please take, yeah, it would be really great to do that. I saw AI and Anna, everybody. I did, I, yeah, I welcome everybody. Um, so please, uh, the one thing I really want you to do now is change your name and add, add a S in the beginning of your name if you want to be uh, in potentially speaking, uh, so in speaking breakout rooms later in the exercises, or a W if you want to be in a writing uh, breakout rooms. So please edit your name uh, there. Thanks also, Amy, for putting it back in the chat again. Um, uh, did I forget something? 
I think we are good. I covered the code of conduct, the breakout rooms, and the welcome to open OLS 7. Um, we can do now a short lightning round table. So um, that would be uh, good if you could. Um, so what is your name? So you have four keywords each because we are already uh, 20 people and we don't want to spend too much time uh, on that, that you will have more time to really uh, talk to each other later and we know each other later. Here, just a quick, uh, really lightning round tables, four keywords each. What is your name, your location, your project name? So your project for uh, OLS, so for this cohort, or if you are a mentor or something, or, or another rules, and your most recent OB. So, I can, I can start. Uh, so my name is Berenice uh, Batu. I'm currently based in uh, Clermont-Ferrand in France. My project name, so I'm director, uh, co-director of OLS. I don't uh, have a project for OLS now. And my most recent hobby, I would say a bit of painting. I'm not sure about that. Was really, yep. Um, then I will go through the order of the roll call. So please add your name also in the roll call that um, we don't forget about you, about you. So Amy, you are second on the roll call. Thanks, Bernice. Um, hi, my name is Amy Tang. I'm one of the co-directors for Open Life Science. So that's my project. Um, I also work for another project called Invest in Open Infrastructure. Um, I'm forgetting. I am based in Utrecht in the Netherlands. Um, and my most recent hobby, plants. <laughs> Handing over to uh, Ismail. Hi, my name is Ismail. I'm the director of Cairoi. Um, I'm based in London in England. My most recent hobby was uh, taking care of cats for like three weeks, but I, I uh, yeah, I'm not there anymore. Um, who's next? Uh, Nikki? Hello, uh, I'm Nikki. I work at Kew Gardens. Um, that's based in London. Uh, my project is called Echinopsis, and it's an open notebook for open science on specimens. And uh, my recent hobby, um, it's a bit obvious based on where I work, but yeah, plants too. So I was I was looking after my house plants at the weekend, pruning them and making them ready for, for the spring. Thanks. The next is uh, Angelica. Yes, hi everyone. Um, I'm Angelica. Uh, I'm from Italy, but I work uh, in Rotterdam in the Netherlands and I live in the Netherlands. Uh, my project for OLS is about building a searchable project database of OLS uh, projects. And my most recent hobby is uh, knitting. Uh, the floor to Malvika. Hi everyone, I'm Malvika Sharan. I am one of the co-directors of OLS. I'm also senior researcher for the Alan Turing Institute, also based in London. I don't think it's ca called hobby, but I moved to London right before pandemic. So I haven't seen London. So this year I'm trying to make enough time to go to different places. And Nikki, I'll visit you in Kew Garden because I haven't been there. Um, I'll pass it to Su Julia. Yeah, hello, I'm Julien Collin. I work in Berlin, Germany uh, as a data manager and my hobby is Aikido, I would say, and I pass to Deborah. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, my name is Deborah Udo. I'm based in Nigeria. And my project is called The Impact of Sleep Deprivation on Mental Health. And wait, what was the last thing we were supposed to say? Recent hobby, listening to podcasts. I am obsessed, a bit obsessed. So I'll pass it on to Hilary. Hi, everyone. Hi. Everyone, my name is Hilary Degala. I'm from Cameroon. The name of our project is From Invisible to Citizens, Apparent Age for Primary School Children Without Birth Certificate. Uh, the next question was recent hobby. I would say like um, maybe playing video games. 
Thank you. I'll pass it now to Laura Becerra. Hi, my name is Laura Becerra. I'm in Colombia and I with the, well, my project is La Conga, specifically I working in Moncora. And well, my present hobby maybe is going the uh, trekking. And I pass it to Carolina Giraldo. Hey everyone, my name is Carolina Giraldo. Uh, I am from Colombia, but I live in Chile. Uh, our project is about uh, uh, to make an application to uh, soil properties uh, management. Um, the last question. Okay. Uh, recently, I have been too many hours uh, watching a um, series. I want to uh, see The Last of Us. So if you agree with me, and uh, you know that uh, series, please say hi to me. And okay, the next person is uh, Anna Villar. Hi everyone, I have a really bad internet connection. I don't know whether you hear me. Um, so I'm Anna, I'm based in Munich. Um, I'm uh, I'm doing this project, uh, which is called Momentum, which is a research platform for yeah, researchers. It's basically an app where we um, want to conduct um, research where participants can also enter um, their data. And um, yeah, my recent hobby is um, skiing. I pass on to Saule. Sorry, you are muted. Thank you, Anna. Um, I'm happy to see everyone. My name is Saule. I'm from Kazakhstan. I'm currently based in Budapest, Hungary. Uh, I'm doing the research in education and open science is a, like a side, side project for me. I also like reading books and uh, watching series. Thanks, everyone. Uh, and I pass is... my pass my um uh the word to um um Sara Acevedo. I'm here. Hi. Um, I don't know. Good morning. Good evening. Good night. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> uh, my name is Sara. Um, I am working with Carolina in a in this program together. And the idea is to develop, as Carolina mentioned, an application, either a, a package or a shiny app for um, managing soil, soil, soil data. So in order to improve the soil data management. And about my hobbies, I am into uh, bullet journaling. So I am trying to uh, take notes beside the computer, not relying uh, all the time in the Outlook or Google Calendar. So basically writing, uh, my plan for this year is writing more. And the next person um, is Angelo. Hello everyone, my name is Angelo. I am Italian and I live in Italy currently and I'm a just by training and my project on on open life science called like collective and open research i would like to touch um how to like manage an open community uh, research group and i think i will touch like a few topics one in climate and maybe one from biology and my recent hobbies are, I think, cycling and running because of the pandemics, of course, because <laughs> gyms were closed. And I started to, I started running and that's it. Um, who's next? Uh, Doha. 
Uh, the next on the call is Stefan on the roll call. Oh. Sorry. Oh, okay, S -S Stefan. Stefan, can you hear us? Can I just uh, point? I think uh, rest of the mm -hmm. folks have written W in front of their names. It's likely okay. they're not able to share, but um, please do sh use chat for introducing yourself, Stefan, Doa, Gabriela, and maybe Bisola, if you'd like to unmute and introduce. Hi. Okay, hi, hello everyone. And my name is Bisola. I'm from Nigeria. Um, I am working with Deborah on um, the project about um, sleep, the effect of sleep or sleeplessness rather on the human system at large. And um, I'm so excited to be here. It's my first time in open science, but I love science. And um, yes, I'm very, very excited to be here and to learn from everyone. I see so many amazing people. It's kind of overwhelming sometimes, but it's very, very fun to be here. Thanks. Uh, Bia, you are also last. Yes, sorry for being late. Just... Oh. All good. Yeah, so hi everyone. My name is Beatriz Serrano Solano. I work in Germany and as a scientific project manager in Europe by Imaging. And my project is about creating an ambassador program for Euro Imaging. So Euro Imaging in general provides access to imaging technologies to um, scientists. And that's what we want to empower more community members to feel entitled to spread the word about Euro Imaging. You need to also mention your recent hobby. Ah, origami. Your recent. most recent hobby, yeah. Yes. Good. Uh, so, for the, if anyone else wants to to say to introduce themselves, they can also do it in the chat, as Malvika mentioned. So, and thanks. I think we are good um, for. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, well, I, I quit writing, but I can introduce myself. <laughs> okay. Um, good. My my name is Gabriela. I'm based on Brazil. Uh, my project name. I'm with. Other three people and project name is Closer to the Sky. It's a co creating astronomical knowledge for slum dwellers in Brazil, in Rio. Uh, we will begin with one slum specifically called Cantagalo. Uh, and my most recent hobby is yoga. Thank you. Um, so should we just, so should we move forward then? I think Amy, you are the next one in the note. Yep, I am. And I'm going to do a short introduction to Open Life Science, since this is our first call in OLS 7. Welcome. Uh, it's really, really nice to hear from uh, all of you, uh, where you're based. Um, I think it's always my favorite moment in OLS. Um, so, so this is all our, I, I don't think this list of languages is complete here. So if you, if you see that yours is not represented, please let us know if we can get it. Um, so just to introduce first, maybe um, some of us here, but also um, people that you'll be getting a lot of emails from <laughs> basically. Uh, so uh, Veronese mentioned that, um, OLS uh, is currently mo mainly organized by five people, although I might add a six here uh, soonish. Uh, so in terms of um, the kind of co-directors of OLS, we have Berenice and Malvika here on the call and myself. Uh, also, Yo, who you'll be seeing, I'm sure, uh, around on Slack and also in a feature call. And Pass, who's here as well, just very early for her, but um, she's uh, our main coordinator <laughs> behind all the kind of lovely emails and introductions and mental mentee pairing everything that you've been seeing so far so uh, uh she is um doing a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of organizing the cohort another name that you will be seeing is camille she's our uh, executive assistant on the team and she'll she she's helping out as well in organizing all less seven 
Um, so uh, open life science really started with this kind of core belief uh, that to be effective, science should be shared openly with others and made freely available. Um, I'm, I introduced the kind of people in the core team, but also uh, just want to also stress that, you know, we really are a lot bigger than that team. Um, there has been so many people, 400 plus, who have contributed, who have been mentored, who are mentoring, um, who have spoken or are speaking on, you know, all of these calls since we founded. And so uh, each and every one of you, each and every one of them will be a, a part of you know, what makes OLS OLS. And we're so glad that you are here with us and will be here with us hopefully for the next 16 weeks of the OLS 7 journey. So the Open Life Science program helps individuals and research groups in becoming open science ambassadors. Um, again, I think we share this um, belief or um, idea that science can only advance when we share our work with others. But we also understand that um, I think, especially all of us in the core team, we've, all, we've been researchers, we are researchers ourselves, and we, we understand that there's a, not only a lot of skepticism and very real skepticism and, and constraints about sharing our work, right? Because we have you know a fear of being scooped, we have constraints in terms of time, um, you know, especially remembering the times that I was a PhD candidate myself of being criticized when my work is openly available for everyone else to be, to critique. Um, and all of this, I just wanna say are very, very real and should not be undermined. Um, but so one of the central thesis, I think when it comes to OLS is us working together to try and figure out how we can be open, but without being scientifically vulnerable. So in the next 16 weeks together, we, all of us in the cohorts, but also you with your mentors as well, will be exploring important concepts and practices in open science and also learning to apply them in our work. Um, and I will stress that this is one step at a time because a lot of times these, you know, we'll be showing you a lot of things um, and it could feel very overwhelming. And so, in terms of how the program is structured and the mentorship especially, it's really about finding the steps that makes the most sense for you and the project that you're working on at the time that um, you want to do them and you have the ability to do them. And so um, as uh, I think we've communicated hopefully through emails, the next 16 weeks will be a combination of these kind of calls, which we call cohort-based training, you'll be um, joining these calls, hearing from experts, guest speakers, uh, interacting with each other, learning from each other every other week, approximately, um, but also meeting your mentors every other week as well um, to really dive deeper into your projects and understanding how you can apply some of the concepts that you've learned in the cohort calls in your own project and get their um, guidance and advice um, and, and, and hands-on practice as well, hopefully. Uh, in the next few months, um, to help put a structures around our calls and the materials that we're sharing, we're going to be using the Mozilla Open Leadership Framework, roughly. Um, just noting that uh, Open Life Science is very much inspired by Mozilla's Open Leadership Program, and so we found that the, the, um, frame, the framework that they've produced proposed is uh, helpful as guiding principles for our own work. And so we would like to share that with you too. So when we talk about open leaders, we're thinking about leaders that design, build and empower their projects and communities for the understanding, sharing and participation and inclusion in our work. Um, there's a lot of words here. Some of them are underlined. Um, We'll dive into them one by one as we go through, especially in the next, I would say, two to four weeks, um, what it means to be designing, building and empowering for understanding, sharing and participation. 
Um, this table breaks it down a little bit more. I'm not going to go into details about it now. I think it will come up again and again. So I do encourage you to have a read when you have some more time uh, to go back to these slides. We'll share the link to the slides as well. Uh, but yeah, have a read of this and, and try and understand how um, what we mean by, by this table and the words that we have here. And uh, it's really about also coming to your own understanding. It will guide you through as well. So um, the other thing when I said, you know, there's a lot of ways that you can go about opening up the work that you're doing is the recognition that, you know, there are lots of different aspects to open science. It can mean, you know, open data, open source software, hardware, open access, but it can also mean, you know, sharing your research results early, like using preprints um, or open review processes, open education. Some of you mentioned citizen science and also just supporting and connecting with others in your field through scientific networks. All of these things could be open science and are part of open science. But what we would really like to propose to you um, is something called open by design, which is that um, openness is not only an afterthought after you've finished the work, but rather you are designing, as I said, uh, fr from the beginning for understanding, sharing and participation, thinking about how you are going to um, open up your work, who you would like to engage in this work and trying to design the scaffold for that kind of participation. So this is different from what we call open by default, for example, where you, um, you know, put something online. I mean, that's also encouraged, but we really want to kind of flip it upside down almost and get you to think about it a little bit, especially in your projects. Some of them are very much at the beginning where you think about, yeah, how we can facilitate those collaboration and openness from the very beginning of the project. Why is this important? Um, there's now a 10 year old study uh, of like 160 tech companies that find that to, ha to have strategic intent in openness and not just openness alone correlates with market performance. Um, this is, you know, market performance is not the only thing that we care about and um, probably not even in the list of priorities of things that we, we, we think about, but it's nice to see um, in this example that, you know, there is benefits to having that level of strategic intent and openness in all of our work. So as I said, really about um, the next couple of weeks about designing openness into our work and not let it be a thoughtless default. And we believe strongly that with your leadership and vision combined with you know, the mentoring and training that we're facilitating here that you can achieve a positive cultural change within your communities. And with that, um, that's a very fast introduction, quite packed. Um, if you have any questions, I think in looking at time, we might not take them directly verbally here, but if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the etherpad and I will, I, I'm happy to go back and answer them <laughs> the best I can. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and handing over to Malvika. Thank you, Emmy. Um, folks, now we're gonna do breakout room discussions. If you haven't previously joined any breakout room in any calls, I'll take a couple of minutes today to explain what this is. This is something that would occur in almost all cohort calls. And so far they have been highlights for, for most of our cohort members because they get to meet each other in a smaller groups. So what we will do, Ismail, our facilitator here today, has been setting a breakout room based on your preference. So if you've just entered and you're wondering what is S and W in front of some people's name, so we have asked people, all of you, to edit your name, to add S if you're interested in being in a small room and talk to each other verbally. But W, if you would like to rather have interaction in a written form. So the written form is quite nice if you're um, in a low internet bandwidth area or if you're in a house with lots of people and you can't speak or whatever reason, right? Like you just don't want to speak today. That is also completely fine. So you can choose W to reflect that. 
what would happen as a result is smile will put you in a room with other people who have put the preference for w so folks who are spoken will be paired with spoken um the, the name that has indicated so i would ask jafsia richard nathaniel bisola if you can take and carolina as well if you could look at your screen and if you see your square in the zoom there are three dots on the top right of that square if you click on that three dot you can find an option that says rename and when you say the name you can add in front of your name if you want to have w or s and the reason we ask you to put it in front is because when we look at participants uh, the alphabetical ordering just allows us to see you very clearly. So if you put it later, that is also fine. It's just going to take some work. So if you can take a few seconds to just do that edit. I see Carolina has written W. I'll, Carolina, put your W in front of your name if that's okay. If you're having trouble, you can also put that in the chat and one of the co-facilitators will help you write your name. Um, and now second part what happens right like in the spoken room please make sure that everybody has a chance to speak and in the written room you can use uh, the the chat on the zoom to talk to each other or if you would prefer you can decide beforehand if you're going to use etherpad i would suggest the chat works the best because then you don't need to switch the screens uh, you can directly just chat um, in the zoom so what are you going to talk about, right? So now when we send you, we, we will give you 10 minutes. There are three questions we've listed today. We want you to discuss with each other. What was your path to this program? How did you end up here? Why you worry about openness? How did you get to get? So how did you get into working open? We believe that all of you have knowledge of open science in some ways. You have already explored it in your own communities. So a lot of things we are saying is not absolutely brand new, but your own personal motivation is quite different from each other. So please share that as well. And finally, how has working open affected your leadership? Um, this could be a complicated question because some people would say, oh, I don't see myself a leader, but I. I want to remind you that you're here, you're leading a project or you're, you're absolutely a leader from your community. So I'll post that three question in the chat. Um, and if you have any question ever while in your breakout room, there would be a button at the bottom that asks for help. You can also leave your room and come to the main room where you'll find the facilitators. But what we'll also do, we'll move around different room to see everyone's doing okay. With that, if do we, if everyone's, Okay, can you give me some emojis to say, oh yeah, I understood all the things you were saying and we're very happy to go to the breakout room. Great, I see some thumbs up. Awesome. So Ismail, please do send them 10 minutes to the breakout room. Rooms are open. They sh we should be able to leave now. If you haven't been assigned, please tell me if you're not seeing a pop-up that's sending you to a room. Um, Jafsia, Fabrice. Fabrice has a question in the chat, um, by the way, um, Emmy and Berenice, which might be a tricky one. Kedmaila. Hi. Are you, 
Are you seeing a pop up to wow. go to um, a breakout room? Nathaniel, can you hear? Can you hear us, Jafsia? Might be connectivity issues there, folks. If you we um, we might do some like admin chatting. Well, <laughs> we'd love you to join a breakout room, but if you um, can't you can also stay here because I see Nathaniel, you are um you wanted to go to a written room. Um so maybe you can also leave your thoughts in the chat. We can put them on the ether pad. <laughs> I'm inventing inventing new ways to participate in OLS right here on this spot. <laughs> There's three questions that Malvika has posted in the chat as well. So if you wanna wanna answer them. Um, written in the chat. I'm happy to run the written breakout room in the main room. <laughs> and uh, for a brief, um, if if they're not available, let us know. Um, we can also help bring kind of ping them. But I think we're still in week two. Um, so sorry, I just saw your other comment as well. Now check on your your micro grant as well there. Um, I believe we sent you money last week. Oh, we should pause the recording actually. <laughs> Hello, hello. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you all had a, a good good chat, good interaction. I was in a written room. It was quite fun to talk to others. We definitely felt that the 10 minutes passes too quickly. Um, and that is a good sign because we're going to hang out with you for next 16 weeks. And I hope I get to talk to each of you. Um, do we want a couple of report out, Emmy? We don't have time. No. All right. Don't worry. Please do use Slack. If you've seen Slack, people love to talk on Slack and we love hearing from you. So if you have anything that you learned about, you want to appreciate or you want to give a shout out, go back to Slack and tell us. Um, but with that, I'll actually pass it to Bernice to introduce you to Open Canvas. Yeah. Thanks, Marvika. I need to share my screen. Okay, okay. it's open canvas. Um, sorry, I have here, here, here. Can you see my screen? I would try to make it a bit. Nope. Wrong slideshow. Can you see it? Perfect. Looks good. Perfect. So um, I will talk a bit about Open Canvas for our st uh, project strategy. So as Amy mentioned, so the idea is to um, we don't want to have op we want to show you how to open by design in instead of open by default. So we will. What we will do is using Open Canvas to think through an open project strategy and look at different examples. And uh, at the end, we will share you the canvas that you, uh, a template of the canvas that you can use for your project. It's one page, and we will ask you to together with your team, or if you are alone in your project, build and and fill this canvas for your project and share it with the with the with the other participant in the cohort and that you can get feedback on the canvas. 
So as um, as Amy mentioned, uh, most of the of the a lot of the of the content from OLS is based on the open leadership framework, where the idea is the open leaders design and build projects that empower others to collaborate within inclusive communities. Here, I will focus on the design aspect um, and uh, this framework, uh, Amy, you already showed the, the pictures. I will focus on the first line on the design for understanding, sharing, participating, participation and inclusions. And we will show, see with the open canvas, you can already do that. You can try to design for the three column, this understanding, sharing and participation and inclusions. So what is the open canvas? So the open canvas is uh, was adapted by Mozilla Foundation from the Lean Canvas. You can find the link there. And the idea of the open canvas is this page here, like you see here, where you have several boxes. I will go through the different boxes to get uh, one by one that you can you you understand how to to fill that. But the idea is you have this open canvas for your project to make you think and to be, help you designing uh, your project for uh, opening it. So it's um, you, when you fill the canvas, you have different parts. On the left side, you have the project part. On the, as the right side, is more focused on the community. You have different uh, things about the problem, solutions, the, re the resources that you need, uh, who you play, you want to in in involve in your community, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and how to execute your project will be up in, in really in the bottom. Um, so now let's go through step by step. So as I said, on the left side, you have the product aspect. On the right side, you have the community. And the idea is uh, to help you uh, planning how you will build the community um, is really as important as planning how you will build the product. So it's why if the community aspect is even a bit bigger on, on the open canvas here. So you first start by uh, the problem on the top. So you state uh, two or three problems that you want to solve with your product. What are the proposed solutions for each of the problem? Um, how you will measure the success of, of your solutions regarding your problem? So that are the first uh, three steps that you usually do for any product that you want to, to build. And then what do you need to build a minimal uh, variable product for, for, your, for your project? Uh, the design, the developer, the expert, hardware, cost, what do you really need? What are the resources that you need for making your, uh, having an uh, MVP there? So once you want to do that is you move to the community aspect, not just focus on the product, but now uh, trying to design your community that will come with your project. So which type of contribution, who are the contributors that you want to involve in your project? So which type of contribution do you want uh, from them? What are the ideal contributors? What do your contributors will look like? What you would like your contributors to look like? That is um, mostly uh, what is called the project execution. So um, how this contrib the, the contributor profile that you identify will help uh, fulfill the needs required to build your product. So based on the resources that you required, you need some contributors. So how do it's how to execute your project to make it happening there. So once you have that, you need to think also about your users. So who is your target audience and early adopters of your projects? Who you are you building this product or this project for? Who will be your early adopters? You need to think also about, about that. What is your target audience? Um, and now how to gain people, how to make people using your product or contribute to product. First, who are the, how to reach to the contributors? How will you gain new contributors? How do you reach to them? How do you involve them um, in the project, in the project? How to make them aware about the project that they can contribute to? Uh, same for users. How will you gain new users? How will you communicate to users that there is this project and the other project and they can use it? Um, how will you uh, reach to them? So how will you grow your community um, of users, contributors, uh, adopters and everything? Uh, 
So that is also the question that you need to think. Definitely the user channels are usually different from the contributor channel. So you need to think about the two, these two targets there. So it's really the community engagement or, uh, so, so contributors are often a subset of the users. It's, uh, I, I went a bit uh, faster. So it's your community engagement, how to engage your community with your product and your project. And at the end, a clear message that states what you offer and why you are different. So it's a unique value proposition. Usually when you when you fill this open canvas, this unique value proposition, if you filled all the stuff there, the, it's much easier to, to write this unique value proposition. So here is an example of an open canvas for, it's called for contributorships, for badges, for science. Uh, you can see the different, uh, what they filled. Um, we usually see that we say we we sh we did also this exercise for open life science when we we st we started open life science. Uh, so I think we don't have it. We should always put that. I think it's totally different now. I would say no, not totally different, but a bit different. But yeah, um, here is an example. I think it would be good to we can we find the other links from previous other open canvas. Um, that you can have other examples of different open canvas that will be also useful for you. Anyway, um, here yeah, the link is not readable, but you can find the link in, in the other parts um, to the templates of the open canvas. Uh, you, I really recommend you to, um, to, to, to do the exercise. I, I, every time I have a new project, I usually do this exercise. I found it really, uh, useful to to do this exercise for every project that I have. Um, so take the time to to do it. I think it's um, my main recommendation. There, I, I was really quick on that. Uh, maybe too quick. So I, I think we have time for one or two questions. If anyone have any any question, but. Uh, I can also understand that it's a lot of information and that needs to be processed and you need to take the time to process that after the call or uh, later. So any questions can come also on the, on Slack later if you want. More than happy to answer them. I don't see. Uh, thank you yeah, very yeah. much, uh, Berenice. I have a question about access to the slides because I think they are very useful. So, so I just now followed the link, but uh, it, uh, it told me to request the. Uh, really, to I, I think I, yeah. I I was sure that I changed the the. I will I will update the link to the slide, um, in the in the in the etherpad. So the slide will be available definitely in the in in the etherpad. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, as Bernie said, if you have uh, any other questions regarding the Canvas or anything else that she's introduced, feel free to uh, reach out to us uh, on Slack or each other on Slack uh, with your questions. Um, Right, we will um, again be going into another set of breakout rooms so that you have more chance to interact with each other. Um, so these will be uh, kind of five minutes discussions and it's quite tight just to note that, um, where we'd love for you to um, articulate to one another your uh, big idea, vision or dream that you wanna achieve by working open, openly and experiment uh, with kind of expressing that vision in a short format. Um, so if you can, uh, in your breakout rooms, um, add your project mission or vision to the uh, either part. I think we're around line 105 at the moment. So you'll find space where each of the individual breakout rooms um, puts your name on, you know, the, the section that where it says names and then put your, um, project mission or vision in the part below where there are empty bullet points. Um, and then you can also look at each other's visions and missions in your breakout room and discuss or ask questions for one another. I hope that is clear.
hopefully. <laughs> um, I'm looking at Ismail to see if the rooms are ready. I'll put the instructions for the breakouts in the chat as well. Room should be open. People should Thank be Thank you, Ismail. If you know. have any questions in your room, please feel free to use the uh, the button to ask for help. Um, assuming the recording as well. Um, I, I've been joining one of the rooms and kind of reading all of your some of their big ideas and visions, and it's just so so inspiring to see where you are and what you're thinking about and how um, your communities have and your backgrounds and your experience as well have motivated you to come to the program and to learn more about how to empower others in your, your own communities. That's my reflection. I hope you have, um, you, you can take some time maybe after this call as well to reflect on what you've read from other people, what you've heard from other people and reflect for yourself as well, you know, what your big ideas are or small ideas, doesn't have to be big to be honest. Um, and uh, yeah, um, using the open canvas as well to think a little bit about how you, how that, what that means to other people that you're trying to build this with or, or serve. Um, yeah, uh, and, and of course, you'll, you don't have to think about all this now. There's 16 weeks where you to think about this together with your team members and, and mentors and cohort members as well. All right. Um, with that, uh, handing back over to Berenice to talk a little bit about road mapping. Thanks, Amy. Uh, again, a bit of me talking. Sorry. Uh, okay. I will manage again. This will be. Yeah, you should be able to see my screen and big screen. Is it okay? Can you see it? We can see the. Um... Is that the open camera, the etherpad? Sorry, I think we no. see the etherpad. You don't see. You see the etherpad. Okay, interesting. Um, I share the wrong thing. Here. Is it working now? It should be a road mapping yeah. for open project. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. They, they changed something in the setup of Zoom last week, and it's make more complicated to share screen than it was before and specific spare portion of your screen. I don't know why, and it's... I try to still understand what's going on. So sorry for that. Um, so now I will talk a bit about road mapping for open projects. So uh, what is... why discover how to use roadmap to plan for working for your work on your project but also for contribution of of people in your project and look at a few examples so and the idea that at the end is you could uh, use that to create a, a roadmap for your project or revise your if you have already a, re, a roadmap to revise it so um the open leaders we discussed last week, last, last talk about designing. Now we can say uh, design, but we want also to empower people to collaborate uh, on your project. So how can we do that? Um, and this, this uh, talk is also a bit more on design for participation and inclusions. A bit about the things of opera, but it's a lot more about the participation inclusion. So what are the governance, uh, discussing about how, how the project works, so the community interaction and everything. So welcoming space, uh, make a good first impression. So you know uh, you are in the right place. So usually it's, you feel it, you can feel it when you, you join a welcoming space. Um, and they usually explain you how you can get involved in, in contributing in this, in this space. Um, and they let you also as a contributors know what is happening now and what is the next phases or what they plan to do. So it's usually uh, 
you feel that when you join some welcoming space that you you feel good and you 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 feel like you can project and you can plan you can see where the project is going and how you can contribute to that and what's go so and usually when they do that they they provide a roadmap they provide somewhere where the people can see and they can project that and so it's a road, it's it's called a roadmap so usually a roadmap goes with uh, and several a uh, several component a summary of the project and welcome for the people to join how to get involved and a timeline of uh what's going on will happen so the project summary and welcome um, is a way to welcome an Orient visitor to the project, to your project. So it's important for understanding what, uh, wh where they are. So what is this project about? What is uh, the global the the global vision about the project? So sometimes they can have been linked directly to the roadmap, and that that uh, the first uh, contact about for them with the project is through the, this roadmap. So they need to have an idea of about what is the project about, what is somehow the vision of the project, wh why, what is important, wh what is this project about? So it's important to have a project summary first to help uh, give a clear focus. Uh, um, and it's helpful also for writing the rest of the roadmap. So all the, the statement that you, you your project statement that you talked about in the last uh, breakout rooms is also important there and will be probably the first things that you will have on your roadmap um then the second aspect of of the roadmap is how to get involved so if uh, new contributors show into the project they see the roadmap they start to read they think they they are interested in contributing in this in this project how can they contribute and then you need to tell them how they can contribute point to part where they can start working on or start learning about the project or learning how to contribute to this project so you need to to somehow point them to different type of of tasks that they can uh they can start to get familiar with the project Point also to the documentation that they should check out. So if you have a good documentation or if you have uh, some documentation, uh, that is important to check, to, to, to point them to this documentation, that they learn about the project, they get familiar with it from either from a user's perspective, but also from a contributor's perspective. The timeline is also a really important part of the roadmap. So it's a way to, it's important to have a timeline where you organize the task that have to be complete for your project around different milestones. And so you map what you are working now and what is planned and what is going next. So usually you have a timeline that say, uh, maybe in the next month, what are the different tasks in the six months, in one year, three years, whatever the timeline you are for your project. But it's really important to have that uh, also uh, stated somewhere, what is the roadmap for the project? What are the planned development of the project? And um, you can also have a different milestone for your project. So what are the different uh, turning, significant turning point or event that you will participate in that make the project moving forward? So if you're example, you know that you will participate in a conference, and where you need to present this project, you have a, st a set of steps that or tasks you want to finish before presenting this project at a conference. So um, maybe you want to build a, a mineral a viral product before a certain deadline for submission to something. I have no idea. Um, and then you 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 need to to have this milestone. You can set up this milestone in your roadmap and say what is the statue. So what is the statue now of achieving? What are the different tasks that needs to be done? And also you can also set up some uh, as I said in in the in the timeline some different milestone in terms of of time frame. So short time frame could be the conference next month. But uh, and you have a list of tasks we want to achieve before that. But you can have a milestone that is in one year because I don't know your the grants for your project is finished and you have to have finished things before the end of the grant or something like this. So it could be like this. So you need to set up different milestones for different time frame, and that you can revise regularly. Okay, I we achieve this time this this uh, step 
we need to move where we can revive. So we 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 move the task for long terms, um, short terms, etc. So list um, I already discussed about the task, but uh, when you have it for each milestone, it's important to list the task to be complete for each milestone uh, and including information um, for users, to, for the contributors to know what needs to be done, what does success look like for, for these tasks, pointer to how to get started to, to contribute to this task and why this task is important. So to relate that to your visions of your project there. So how to start a roadmap, there is different way. You can use, uh, for example, if you use GitHub on a folder or something uh, to share about your project, um, you can use a separate file, like for example, a roadmap.md, so a markdown file where you have a clear roadmap. So for example, in the open discovery, uh, you can check there later, they have a dedicated roadmap file. It can be directly in a readme file, we will discuss, I think it's in two weeks, uh, about uh, tooling for open projects. And we will talk about uh, readme file that is important to have. But so you can directly have your own map directly in your readme file. It can be an issue. Um, for example, if you use GitLab or GitHub, you can have an issue in, in the, your GitHub or GitLab to explain the, the, the roadmap. So we had that, uh, for example, for application for open app science, I think it was for the first cohort. We have a roadmap of what we want to, to do. And we, we put that and we put task of things we want to do. Um, it can be also now that it, you have a lot of, of um, project apps, for example, in GitHub or in GitLab, where you can have a list of different tasks and you can link to different issues and everything. Um, that could be also a way to store your roadmap. So it's what is used for peer product science and Laconga uh, physics, it's what they use. But there is different way of, of sharing your roadmap also with your community, what is planned to achieve. It can be a talk to your community to explain your roadmap and then going through the roadmap together with your community, you have a lot of different ways of storing and make your, your roadmap available for, for your community, for your contributor, for your users. But it's usually a, a, not a good thing to think um, the roadmap, reading your roadmap with your visions and also revise your roadmap regularly of what, what do you want to do? What do you plan to do as different milestones and different time frame? Um, and I think I'm done with the, this talk. Uh, so really it's a, it's a good also exercise for you, for your, for your project to try to build this roadmap, uh, either now or at a different time point, definitely. You need to revise regularly your roadmap. I think I would go for that again. I think if you have, I don't think any question, please also, if you have any question, you can unmute yourself if you want, put them in the chat or also in the other parts and we can answer them. But I think we are also short in time, so. Please write your question and then we can, we can answer them. Amy, should I hand over to you? Yeah, um, we recognize that these calls are usually, we try to stuff a lot of information in there. <laughs> Just wanna give you as much as, as, as we know. So um, uh, if you have any questions at any point, feel, please feel free to, again, um, discuss on Slack or uh, also with your mentors as well. That's what they're there for. <laughs> um, so uh, just ending with a couple of um, reminders. Um, please make sure that you have, well, you can receive our emails. I think there's been a couple of issues at the very beginning. Hopefully it's now resolved. But if you're not getting any emails in the last couple of weeks from us, there's an issue. So uh, let us know uh, in, the, in Slack. Um, and uh, you should also have uh, access to the cohort, the OLS public calendar. I think that's what it's called. It's a Google calendar that you can subscribe to and get the latest timings for these calls um, and other ones as well. And also the uh, Slack channel, uh, which is called OLS 7 cohort on the big open life science group. 
Um, if you haven't been there yet, if you haven't seen it, again, please reach out to us um, and we can make sure that you're added there. Um, it's really useful to be on there, um, not only to ask questions, but also see, you know, check out some of the opportunities or events that other people are sharing um, that you might be interested in. Um, so I would say, yeah, the mailing list, the calendar and the Slack is our main communication channels throughout OLS 7. So please make sure that you have access to them. If not, reach out to us, we'll get you access to them. Um, micro grants, some of you have already uh, applied for a micro grant. These are grants for uh, kind of small pieces of hardware equipment or um, subscriptions, data, fuel, anything like that, um, that will facilitate your participation in OLS and makes it easier. If you think you would need a grant, please uh, have a look at the uh, policy that is linked to on line 226. And again, uh, drop us an email um, and we'll, we'll take it from there. Um, yes, that's. I think that's the two main points in terms of logistics. Uh, we also, every single cohort, like to give a name to the cohort. Um, some examples are things like open seats for OLS1, uh, perseverance for OLS3. I don't know why I skipped OLS2, which was mass cohort. Um, that was the start of the pandemic, so you can understand. Um, so what should we name OLS7? Uh, if you have any suggestions, please feel free to put them down in uh, line 231 on the Etherpad. Um, be creative. We love creative names. <laughs> um, you don't have to do this now, you can do it at any point that um, you have an idea, you can also share the idea on Slacks. Um, okay, assignments. Um, and I will stress that every single time <laughs> when it comes to week two's assignment, it's a lot. So we don't expect you to complete any or all of these. I mean, some would be good, but like all of this definitely not before week three. It's there for your reference. Um, and please feel free again to use your mentors, chat with them and see how much you, you know, how to manage your workload in terms of um, following this program. Um, so the list of things that are relevant to uh, what we've introduced in these calls, um, please feel free to open an issue on the OLS 7 repo on GitHub. Um, and so that helps you to track your progress within the program. Um, I might have just spoken a whole load of jumble if you're not familiar with GitHub and don't worry about that. We're going to have a call in three weeks time in week five, uh, where we'll be giving uh, hopefully a gentle introduction to GitHub, especially for those who have never heard of this before you join OLS and have never used it before. So uh, for now, if you're unfamiliar with GitHub, please feel free to create an account on github.com. Um, and we'll take it from there in week five. Uh, if you are familiar with GitHub, you can go ahead and create that issue. Um, I think the link is on line 240. There's an issue template that you can use and that will allow you, you to track your progress. There's a reflection exercise that we'd love you to do as a mentee to reflect on your role. Uh, that's linked to in line 244. Um, there's also kind of a compare and contrast assignment as well that comes with that to get you to think a little bit more about your community interactions. And I find that really useful. Might not be now, might be a later point, but have a look and see if you want to complete that. Uh, we've introduced two pieces of kind of key tools that you could use uh, within this call, um, the open canvas and the roadmap. So both of those we have templates for. Uh, and materials for, you can have a look at those uh, links that we've provided on lines 246 and 248. Um, have a look at them, maybe start working on your open canvas, have a discussion with your mentors where you are finding it challenging. Um, also, when you have your GitHub issue, we'd love you to put a link to your open canvas and your roadmap from your issue so that other people in the cohort can see your work and also give you feedback on it. And at the same time, we'd love you to give feedback for others in your cohort as well. So when you see those links um, popping up in the GitHub issues, feel free to have a look at what others have done and provide feedback because that's way we all learn. Um, again, I've just spoken a lot. We'll recap all of this in an email, I'm pretty sure, uh, with all the links and to the slides and to the recording of this call as well. So please don't panic. Um, no expectation for you to finish all of this before next week. But get started would be good.
Next week is week three. We'll have another repeat of this call for those who can't make this time, just for all of us to see our faces and hear our voices You know, at the beginning of the cohort. You'll also be meeting your mentors next week uh, for your second mentoring call, because hopefully the first one is last week. Um, if you have any issues reaching your mentor, can't, you know, they're not replying to emails, they can't schedule and didn't give, them a, give an explanation, reach out to the team at Open Life Science and we'll try and see how we can follow up from there. Um, heading into week four, which is in two weeks time, we'll start uh, introducing more tooling and road mapping tools for open projects. So that's, that's the next call. And as, as I mentioned, week five, there's an optional call. It's an introduction to GitHub, especially for those who are new to GitHub. That's a lot. And we did manage to finish on time, I think. Um, if you have any questions at all, any sort of concerns in your head, please feel free to reach out to us in Slack or email. Um, and there's a little feedback session, section at the bottom of this etherpad where you can tell us what's worked and what didn't in this call. And we'd love to hear your thoughts. With that, um, thank you so much. It's lovely to see everyone for the first time in OS7. Um, and I look forward to spending the next four months with you all. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, depending on where you are. And we'll see you in two weeks time. Thank you all.